Hello, and welcome to the Killer Cuties podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Cassidy, and I've seen almost every horror movie out there. And I'm KD, and I've seen almost none of them. So join us each week as I attempt to make a horror fan out of KD. As a warning, we will be discussing spoilers and some uncomfortable topics that may be in the plots. So feel free to check out the film on DoesTheDogDie.com first to check for any triggers before listening. Today, we're going to be talking about Ari Aster's unconventional supernatural horror film, Hereditary. Let's get spooky. Uh, So Hereditary is about the Graham family, consisting of Annie, her husband Steve, their son Peter, and daughter Charlie. Uh, They all attend the funeral of Annie's estranged mother, Ellen. And we kind of learn that Ellen was not really a part of their lives until Charlie was born, after which she became over bearingly a part of it and wanted to be really involved even going so far as to try to breastfeed charlie yikes uh so later peter goes to a party and annie makes him take charlie with even though she doesn't really want to go uh there she accidentally consumes nuts that were in a cake and this triggers her severe nut allergy on the way to the hospital charlie sticks her head out the window to try to breathe And when Peter swerves to avoid a dog, she is decapitated by a telephone pole. Peter is in shock. He drives home. He leaves her body in the car for her mom to find the next morning. After this, (laughs) uh, Annie befriends a woman in her support group who teaches her how to do seances. Uh, And when they tried to contact Charlie, the family begins experiencing supernatural events. Uh, Annie then discovers that her mom was actually a leader of a cult, which is trying to find a male host for a demon to possess. Uh, And the woman from her support group is actually a part of that cult. Uh, She and the other cult, uh, sorry, (laughs) while trying to burn Charlie's old sketchbook, which the demon was using to talk to them, sort of. Uh, Annie accidentally burns her husband Steve to death and then becomes possessed. She and the other cult members then come after Peter. When he's trying to get away from them, he leaps from the attic window. His body is then taken over by the demon, and the cult members gather around and praise him. And that's what you missed on Glee. (laughs) (laughs) Wild movie. Yeah. How did you feel about it? You watched it at night, right? I watched it in the dark. <laughs> How was that? It was a choice. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wish I had not watched it in the dark because I almost peed my pants. Yeah, I did specifically request that you watch this in the dark. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> because... You know what's funny is you requested that before... I told everybody in our Discord, we have a Discord because it's like streaming. Um, I, literally like two days prior to me watching the movie, I told everybody in Discord that there's this episode of some ghost show where there's a ghost in like the corner of a room and that fucking traumatized me as a child. Um, and then here's this movie, Hereditary, where there's a ghost in the in the corner of the room. Well, and oh my God. Is she really a ghost? Well, yeah, I guess there's, like, there's visions. And then the mom's just crawling on the ceiling at the end. So. I'm not going to lie, though. In the corner, scary as hell. Okay. Moving from the corner to the door, laughed my ass off. Oh, same. Literally, when she, like, scurries across the screen, I laugh every single time. And by every single time, I I mean the two times I've seen this movie. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I I scream, I guffawed. Oh, I a guffaw. It. Interesting. Yes. Yeah, the first time I went into this movie, I I made the fatal error on my end of not looking up the genres. I did not think it was going to be supernatural. Which, like, I get watching it the second time. There's, like, actually a lot of clues in the beginning that it's going to go there. Uh, but I'm actually an expert at ignoring supernatural clues, so I <laughs> did not see those. You don't it. I don't, so it, it means nothing to me, right? So like, and so I was really disappointed the first time I watched this movie because I thought it was just going to be about like a mom kind of losing it with grief and like 
like I when she tells a story about how she like was sleepwalking and doused herself in like lighter fluid and stuff I was like oh she's gonna like start sleepwalking and shit's gonna go down like that's what I thought it was going towards which does happen like a little bit but I wasn't expecting it to just be like oh demon there we go (laughs) yeah it made me sad but I liked it a lot better watching it the second time and like knowing what I was getting into um, I'm actually surprised because I thought that you really liked this movie just from like the vibes that you've been giving off about it. I do. Uh, I do. I oh. do like this movie. I, okay. it, it hurt my feelings the first time I watched it because it wasn't what I wanted oh. it to be, but okay. I do still love this movie. I think it's fantastic. Um, and I think if you know, it's supernatural and you go into it with that, it's, it's fine. Yeah. This is the first real supernatural movie that we've watched, right? Mm. With the exception yeah. of like the found footage aspect of Blair Witch, it's the first it's the first movie that's reminded me of my extensive horror background of four out of twelve paranormal activity movies. Yes, yes. It is the first one dealing with like demons for sure yeah okay so one thing i didn't really like was that towards the end um they gave the demon kind of a shape you know how it the light is like hovering over his back as as the sun had had just fallen out of the window yeah um and the light kind of like goes over his back and and then he wakes up that would have been more fun if it was ambiguous yeah i feel that like did he get possessed? Did he not get possessed? Yeah. But we know he did. Yeah, I would agree. They kind of used the light, like, earlier, too, when he's, like, about to slam his face against the desk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which, by the way, Alex Wolf, who plays Peter, um, the son in this movie, he wanted to actually break his nose for the scene. Like, he was like, yeah, let's just go full on. I don't know. Actors are weird. And Ari Aster, the director, was like, how about how about no? Let's not do that. <laughs> so they, yeah. they gave him like they're like, we're going to give you like a padded desk. He assumed that like the whole thing was just padded. No, it was like a hard surface with like padding on top of it. He ended up dislocating his jaw <laughs> during that scene. <laughs> we, he had already dislocated it previously. So it was like a re-injury. Okay. But like, but still, what the fuck? I I'm just not that committed to anything. No, absolutely not. Also, can we talk for a second about how this is the same kid from the Naked Brothers band? Yeah, I would love to talk about that. Okay. <laughs> I I think he did incredible in this movie, and that's probably partially because I had never seen him in anything but the Naked Brothers band on Nickelodeon. And Dang. so I was like, this is the kid who was in love with his babysitter? Like, what's happening? <laughs> right? Wild. And I didn't recognize him either. He has grown up a lot, yeah. Yeah, he's a full-fledged adult. I did recognize him, but only because, like, his brother Nat Wolf has been in a lot of things. And I think they yeah. kind of, like, they have similar feet. Like, you can tell they're brothers. So mm-hmm. I knew it was him. But yeah, my expectations were not high for him. And he really went above and beyond. I felt like he he did a fantastic job. Yeah, no, he really did. Um, between also, him and the mom, I mean, the acting was just next level. Okay, Tony Collette is unbelievable in this movie. And if the Academy didn't hate horror so much, she would have taken Best Actress. Like, no offense so to whoever won that year, but no one outdid this performance. Like, I agree. The I am your mother scene? Please. Please. <laughs> Which is why we watch this movie now, because I saw that scene on TikTok and I was like, wait, why aren't we watching this movie immediately? Yeah. So we literally like re- reconfigured our entire calendar so that we could watch this movie now because I had just seen the I'm your mother scene. Yeah. Well, you were like, oh, I'm I'm going to just Google what ha- like the context for that. And I was like, you can't Google the context for that because you're going to find out that she gets her 
Kappa detated from her body, and that's going to ruin the whole effect. <laughs> so you can't do that. <laughs> the, that scene... <sighs> Ari Aster knows how to show grief in a way that I don't think I've ever really seen anyone else do before. He yes. does it here. He does it again in Midsummer, And it just... In Midsummer. He did Midsummer as well, yeah. That was oh, second. is this the director? Yes, sorry. The director, oh, sorry. Okay, yeah. Okay. And I thought you were talking about the... No, 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 no. That's, that's Alex Wolf of the Naked Brothers band. Yeah, um, yeah Naked Brothers band. No, Ari Aster, the director. Yeah, he, he just captures it in a way that's like, oh my God. Like when Charlie dies and Peter just goes home and he just follows him the whole time. And you hear, mm -hmm. you know, his mom say, oh, thank God they're home. And then it just like stays on his face until the sun rises the next morning. And you hear the mom go outside and find her daughter's body in the car. And then just the mom like crying and screaming like I just need to die on the floor. And it's like the mm -hmm. first time I watched this, like I don't think I breathed the entire time that was all happening. No way. It just oh, this movie didn't even have to be a horror for it to be, like, incredible. It could have been just a straight family drama, and it would have been just as fucking good, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I wanted to go into this whole experience of me watching horror movies and me knowing everything about horror movies, thinking that horror can be for everyone and that you can, like, acquire the taste for horror, you know? But after seeing this movie, I know that that cannot be true for everybody because nobody could acquire a taste for this movie. You either have it or you don't. And it's specifically because of those scenes. Like, I think that's th fair. So hard to watch. Yeah. So hard to watch. Especially being a mom, like, I can put myself in those shoes. Well, not like really, but. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Brutal. I think having a kid and watching this would be a whole different ballgame. <laughs> yeah. Because. Wow. Yeah. And I know, yeah, I felt a little bit bad. You wanted to watch it, though, so it's not my fault. But I know that <laughs> kids dying in movies, Katie's not a fan. I am a big fan. <laughs> yeah. Two completely different sides of the spectrum. Not in, like, a weird way. I just, I appreciate the boldness of it, you know? <laughs> Yes. Oh. Um, you like the ball of killing a kid. I do. But yeah, actually, uh Tony Collette had told her agent that like she didn't want to do any more dark films anymore. Like she's like, I only want comedies, only bring me comedies. And then she read this script and she's like, actually, never mind. <laughs> 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 but she's not really like a fan of horror movies, so she wasn't like wild. I know. I'm like She's in a bunch of them. We're in the sixth sense. Like <laughs> just moms Wait, with is weird she... kids. She's the mom in Sixth Sense? Yeah, she is. That's right, that's right. Yeah. That's on our list. Yeah. But it's, it's funny because it's not really uh, I think it's got horror elements, you know? There's ghosts and shit. Okay. <laughs> True. Um, but this actually wasn't even supposed to be a horror movie. Ari Aster had originally written it as just a straight-up family drama. And then he kind of saw the potential that it could have for horror. And he decided to take it there. Because he had always planned on Midsummer being his first horror movie and then this being just a family drama. But I think it would have been fantastic either way. The first half, honestly, is just kind of a drama. Like, if, if you just watched the first half of this movie, not even horror. Just fucking sad, dude. <laughs> yeah. Well, until they show Charlie's head. Yeah, that's a little bit grotesque. It is a director trademark so far, though. I mean, he's only produced two feature-length films. But close-ups of heads is a thing he likes to do. Just oh, so you're fun. prepared for whatever we do in summer. I'll look forward to midsummer then <laughs> is it a child then too well isn't that kind of a spoiler i don't want you to like see a kid and be like oh it's them can't wait to see their heads 
podcast. <laughs> like the Well, I know it's not Miss Flo. You don't know that actually, but <laughs> well, who's to say, you know? Not me. You'll find out when we watch it. <laughs> the one thing about the acting though that that I will comment on is that um I think the hysteric the hysterics were great. Mm-hmm. Except when we were burning the book. Right before the husband got burned. I think those hysterics were a little bit overdone. Hmm. Remember that scene? I do. Drawn out. It was like, okay, just get on with it. Like, we get it. You're hysterical. Like, <laughs> you need to burn the book. Okay. Well, I think that the reason why it was so over the top was because she originally when she put the book in it burned her and so she felt like she couldn't commit suicide right like she couldn't do it herself and so that's why she was so hysterical because she needed him to do it because she wasn't strong enough to do it herself but turns out it was going to burn him anyway so right but i think i kind of feel the sorriest for the dad oh yeah Like, he's just trying to grieve his daughter, but he can't because his wife and son are going at it. And then his wife, in his eyes, is having a mental breakdown. And then his son, again, in his eyes, is committing self-harm. And then he just gets burnt alive. Like, what a terrible time he had. Horrible time. I agree. (sighs) Poor guy. Yeah. He didn't even get to see the naked cult members. Honestly? (laughs) What is that called? Like comedic resolution? Yeah, you liked it. You liked the little, the little nudities at the end. Yeah, I like a I. Yeah. <laughs> Katie was was live messaging me while she watched this, and I was trying to keep up with where she was at, and then I just get an eggplant emoji. <laughs> I was like, there it is. <laughs> wiener. Just suddenly a wiener in my face. Yeah. Well, yeah. Multiple wieners. There were a few wieners. Mm -hmm. I wish we would stop saying wiener, but. (laughs) There you go again. Sorry. Um, What? uh, Speaking of the wiener scene, Mm -hmm. um, they couldn't have like afforded a fly animation. A fly animation? Yeah, you didn't notice that the flies were just, like, literally black circles? Oh, no, I wasn't paying attention to the flies so much. Okay. Well, next time you watch this movie... I will. You need to look, because it's literally just circles. Like, just black circles. Isn't that kind of what flies look like? No, I mean, flies have a shape and a form, right? Like, Yeah, black circles. <laughs> <laughs> They were probably real fr- flies. Ari Aster is another uh, another one who really likes like practical effects. So he wanted everything that they could do practically to be done so instead of doing it in post. They did the chalkboard writing on itself. They did that practically. They like stuck a little magnet in it, made it right. Yep. Uh, they had that. to learn how to make a candle they light itself. Like <laughs> they did a lot of it. They didn't just reverse a candle being. No, because it was like the big. But yeah, no, they didn't. They they made it light itself. Damn. Yeah, we should look up. Flies were, uh, you know. Yeah, won't you feel silly if they're real flies? <laughs> yeah, I will. I really <laughs> will because that stuck out to me so badly that I had to say that. Maybe you're just so used to CGI flies in movies that you think that's what they look like. Yeah. Like CGI just tries too hard. Like this is what flies actually look like. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I do like the like. How... Oh, sorry. No, please. After you. Oh, I was just gonna say I like like the little details that they did. Like I like the symbol on the grandma's necklace being on the telephone pole that killed Charlie, um, or the friend that like shows Annie the seance stuff. When she's in the parking lot telling her that she's, like, going to have a seance or whatever, if you look closely, you can see the chalkboard in her car. She bought it. 
that at the store. So like you can tell that she's lying if you actually pay attention enough. And then she's like, "Oh, it was my it was my grandson's lie. She just bought it." <laughs> so like it just kind of yeah. shows like the little details. Also, apparently one of the kids that like Peter's smoking weed with under the bleachers is shown in the cult at the end too. So like there's just like a lot of little details like that that are like I don't know, I just think it it's really well written, well thought out. I know. I love I love a good like not an Easter egg, but you know, like details throughout the movie that that could have given you the the resolution. Yeah. If you just paid attention. It kind of makes the rewatchability a little bit better too. Yeah, because then you have to like dig around and Yeah, you can like spot stuff that you didn't see the first time. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Wow, I didn't notice one of the kids was in the at the end. Yeah. Hmm. It's like brief. Yeah. You don't you don't really see much of the wieners. Yeah. I also really liked uh, the uh the use of the miniatures to kind of like show past events. Like I thought that was clever and kind of a better way of like than just the characters explaining it or flashbacks or like whatever. I thought it was just a really creative and interesting way to like portray that. Yeah, no, I agree. Um I agree. And it was really artistic the way that they like started the movie too. Mm-hmm. How you know, you're like zooming in on that. It's just turned red. Sorry, it's my color correcting. <laughs> <laughs> um anyway, you they like zoom in on the on the room and the miniatures and then like that's setting up the son's actual room. Yeah. They did that, so they created the miniatures. Which I guess Ari Aster had like a whole list of like miniatures that needed to be made for the movie, like before they even started shooting. He's like, I need all this. <laughs> but they did that and then they built the entire interior of the house on a sound stage so that they could like remove walls and have it look exactly like the miniatures. So yeah. It was all very uh intentional. Fun. I like that. Super cool. Super cool. Yeah. One of the uh, um, trailers for this movie was accidentally shown in a theater in Australia before a PG-13 movie. <laughs> and the kids were like, the parents were like scrambling to get their kids out of the theater and then they had to give everybody complimentary tickets and issue an apology. That reminds me, one time, it has nothing to do with anything. <laughs> one time I went to a theater and there was a dead mouse on the floor, like leading into the theater. We had to walk yeah. over it to get to our seat. We went and complained about it, and they gave us free tickets. Wow. Free tickets for a dead mouse. Even exchange, I think. I don't mind a dead mouse. Okay. <laughs> I mean, there are worse things. Yeah. They could have said sorry, and I would have been accepted. I would have been fine with it. That's fair. All right. Anyway. Um, how scary did you think this movie was? Uh oh, here it comes. I gave it a two out of five. I don't think this movie is really scary at all. It didn't scare me the why first time. So- didn't scare me. The second. Why are you so excited about me watching it at night? Because everybody else thinks it's scary. And if you think supernatural stuff scary, then I I feel like you would think it was scary. Okay, so <laughs> here's the thing. Yeah. Um, a lot of how I judge how scary something is is based on how I feel after watching the movie. Like if I'm okay. still scared. Okay. As opposed to watching it and being scared. So watching it, I was very scared. Afterwards, not so much. Like it didn't leave an impression on me, you know? Okay. Because she like scurried across the wall. And, yeah. You know, and then there were wieners and. Yeah. So um, I gave it a three. Okay. I was going to give it a one, but there is one jump scare that got me the first time and it got me the second time too because I kind of forgot about it. <laughs> is when the-, the... No. Those are the... No, it's literally when like the mom's in the corner and then he like turns around and he sees the, the cult guy naked in the doorway and then he like hears the scurrying so he turns back towards that 
and then like the mom comes from the corner and just like sprints at him i don't know why but that i just forgot that it happened and i was yeah i jumped a little i'm not gonna hold you (laughs) no that that one didn't get me at all the ones that got me were the the noises that charlie would make Mm. after she was already dead those got me yeah yes that's fair yeah yeah but yeah i don't know this movie just didn't yeah honestly probably more of a 1.5 yikes is that your final answer yeah i'm gonna go with 1.5 okay it just didn't do it i don't know it just didn't scare me very much I think it's the first time we've been more than one point apart. Probably. I watched it in the dark. What can I say? Yeah, I like that better. I feel like it's a more honest reaction. Yeah. <laughs> it's visceral. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I also feel like I am definitely in the minority there. I feel like a lot of people think this movie is pretty scary. Or at least fairly scary. I don't. There's something wrong with the bikini. <laughs> no, we know. We know. We're what, 10 episodes in now? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. We know. We know. Yeah, it's clear. We don't hold it against. Um, you know, honestly, I was more scared because the same day I watched an episode of The Last of Us, and that scared me. I was, I was so scared. Mm. I still have not watched that. I'm going to wait till it all comes out. I can't. I need to, like, be able to binge watch something. I can't wait. What is it? Fucking cable? I'm not waiting every week to watch an episode. What is this? 2007? Oh, my God. <laughs> something to look forward to. No. Every week. Every Sunday. Mm-hmm. Every not for me. By the time this episode comes out, it will be all out. That's true. When this episode airs, I'll probably have already seen it. <laughs> And you too can be scared like me. Wow, maybe. We'll see. Uh, ciao. Ka <laughs> ciao. <laughs> All right, how sexy um, did you think it was? Did those did those cult penises really do it for you or what? Yeah, no, the, the penises I, I gave a point five, so one point five. Wow. Okay, okay, okay. Um I, if if you're a Dom, the end of this movie is for you. Okay. Bold statement. What do you mean? Uh, no, they're all they're all naked on their hands and knees. What more could you ask? Yeah. <laughs> you know what? You're you're making a compelling argument. <laughs> Thank you. Still only a one point five though, because you can only. You can only do so much with a movie after you hear the sound of someone being decapitated on the telephone. There's actually like several decapitations. Like two. Just more than you. Oh, I forgot about the piano wire one. Yeah, she just saws her head right off. Yeah, I turned the volume down for that. (laughs) I couldn't listen to that. You got, you have like sound (laughs) sensory things, huh? Yeah, the sound. And I did one of these too. Just holding your hand in front of the part that scares you. <laughs> like, I could just see her eyes. I don't have to look at her neck. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, that was awful. Yeah. Yeah, I gave this movie a one. I did not think it was sexy at all. I think occasionally cults can be sexy. In film, not in yeah. real life. Don't join cults, please. That's it's not actually fun. Um but like, oh, you have experience? No, but like, you can yeah. tell. I don't think anybody in a cult's ever had like a root and tune in your time. <laughs> Unless you're like the leader or something. But, uh. Have we talked about how yeah. I almost joined a cult? It sounds very on brand for you. If I'm being you honest. Know that. I mean, do our listeners know? No, that? no, we have not talked about that. Okay. Well, we don't need to. Anyway, <laughs> so you gave it a one. I did, I did. It's not a sexy cult. The 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 peni did not do it for me. <laughs> peni, yeah, <laughs> just wasn't. It wasn't for me. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. All right, but it was fucked up. Don't you agree? Well, what did you rate it, Katie? 
pretty fucking high. Oh. It was a 3.5 until okay. the piano wire scene. That bumped it up? And then I bumped it up to a 4. We are once again more than one point away from each other. Oh my god. What did you put? 2.5. Half. So, okay, that's fair. Yeah, right? I think there there's two decapitations. Charlie's death in the aftermath. Very hard to stomach. Two kids, I think, technically die. Like, I think it's safe to say Peter's not with us anymore, right? Uh, well, so, isn't he Charlie at the end? <clears throat> well, Charlie and uh, Paimon the demon are both, like... Because the, the demon was initially, I think, in Charlie is the, is the idea of it. <clears throat> yeah. So, like, originally, the grandma had tried to put it in Annie's brother, right? Her son. And that's why Mm -hmm. in the group thing, she was talking about how her brother had schizophrenia and he was saying that their mom was trying to put people inside of him. So I think that was kind of alluding that it wasn't him. And I think the idea was that Charlie was the reincarnation of her brother, Charles. And so that's why the grandma was like so obsessed with her. But the demon Mm -hmm. needed a male host. So like they had to get rid of Charlie to put it into Peter. Um. So yeah, I think like Charlie's spirit was still attached to the demon. So I think she was also inside of Peter at the end. Yeah, makes sense. But yeah, so I gave it a 2.5, you know? Okay. That's that's one rating. You know, it's not it's not the most fucked up thing I think I've seen from Ari Aster, so See that okay, that he's only done two movies, so good to know that Midsummer's worse. Nope. Not even talking about that. I'm talking about one of his short films. <laughs> oh. Yeah. We probably won't cover it because it is a short. And I don't think we'd have enough content to talk about it for for that long. Um, but if you want to see something that's uh pretty high on the like that's fucked up, why did you think of that scale? Uh go watch The Strange Thing About the Johnsons by Ari Aster. It's a short film. Um, and it changed me as a person, I think, a little bit. <laughs> so that's, that's the, what we're calibrating your scale to. No, it's still not the most fucked up thing I've ever seen. Oh. But from Ari Aster, yeah, that would be the one that I would probably ask him, like, hey, what was going on here? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, that's fair. Yeah. Um. I think that um, scary and fucked up are going to be the ones where I say are going to be as if we haven't been doing this for other months. The ones that, like, you have a baseline. Yeah. You've seen all the movies, and I have not. Yeah. I'm not surprised that you've thrown some of them. Right, which I'm, and I'm also not surprised that you've said things that are, like, really high now, and maybe once, well... Yeah, once we watch, because I have some of the ones that I think are are fairly more fucked up on the list. I think I've already mentioned that there's one that's not on the list at all, because I don't think it's like a fun time to even talk about. But, <laughs> but like, that would be my five, right? So, like, <laughs> one that I'm not even really willing to, like, talk about for an hour is my five. So. <laughs> okay, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> what did I give the menu? Four? You did not give the menu a four. You gave it pretty high, though, right? I think I did. Yeah, I feel like it was surprisingly think, high for me. I don't think this was as fucked up. As the menu? I don't think so. Oh, I think this one's more fucked up than the menu, for sure. Really? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because, again, like, so the menu was just, like, the, a fun romp. Like, I didn't think, like, it impacted right. me the same. Whereas, like, this, like... Like, when people died in the menu, it was kind of like, LOL, like, we're all having a ball. (laughs) Whereas, like, in this movie, like, you feel it when Charlie dies, right? Like, it's, like, that stays with you for a little bit, that scene. So I think that's why it's a little bit more fucked up for me. But Okay, yeah. I agree with that. I agree. Thank you. Um, I have a lot of opinions, and it's so weird, because they're all correct, so... (laughs) We know this, too. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, speaking of your correct opinions, what did you um, rate this overall? 
Overall, I gave it a four out of five. Oh my god. Me too. Oh my god. <laughs> we're in sync. We're we're synced yeah. up. <laughs> we are one. Literally none of the other categories. No. But but we came together all- here at the end, and that's where it matters. <laughs> Yeah, that's where it matters. I think this is a great movie. It's heavy. The acting is insanely good. I think it's well thought out. It's beautifully written. It's beautifully shot. It's beautifully directed. Like, I think it is overall a fantastic movie. Um, I don't think I will ever get over like the disappointment of where I thought it was gonna go versus where it went. And again, like supernatural movies just aren't that scary to me. So that's why it's not a five out of five. But but yeah. I do really love this movie. I think I think it's fantastic. Yeah, I agree. Very good movie. Incredible acting. Like if anything, like the four is because of the acting. Um. Yeah. No, I agree. Well, there you go. Confirmed. My opinions are correct. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> what have we done? You're you're, you're instigating me. <laughs> Uh, would you survive it i forgot about that question yeah um i mean if you join the cult do you survive yeah (laughs) i guess technically (laughs) okay then yes okay katie's joining the cult she's yeah she's in deep um yeah i think i would survive i don't think i would join the cult I think it'd just be vibing. If I was, like, if we're saying I'm a part of this family, right, I think also I'd kind of be fine because I'm not a male host and I don't have a peanut allergy. So, like, signs are pointing to yes. Um, (laughs) If I was the mom, I would have never even entertained the whole seance thing because, again, I don't believe in that kind of stuff. So, no deal in here. Yeah, but, like, if, if my friend from support group was, like, come to my apartment we're gonna do a seance i'd be like no i'm trying to grieve my daughter right now so it's gonna be a no from me <laughs> and then uh my died. roll credits what? what 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 did you say what did what did what? i said my son died oh like the woman yeah in support group yeah, yeah. That's literally great. every argument that you're giving right now, Joan counteracted. No, that's great. Oh, I don't believe in saying it. No, but I'm saying like that's fine that like her son died and she thinks that she can talk to him through a chalkboard. I wouldn't believe that, so I would just be like, all right, she's probably needs a little bit of more therapy, and then we're gonna be on a roll. So it, I would not. I don't think I would go to her apartment and even see the chalkboard moving. So. I think I'm fine. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. So you're you're putting yourself in you're the daughter in this situation. Well, I think I'm like, like putting a- myself in anybody's shoes, right? Like I think I'd be okay. But I guess technically like if I was a townspeople, like I wouldn't join the cult, so I'd be fine. But I also think if either of us were the daughter, like if we were Charlie in the situation, I don't, I technically don't think that there Wait, was Charlie a way. Charlie or? Charlie, the daughter. I meant the mom, who's also the daughter. Well, yeah. So I was putting myself in her shoes at one point, saying I'd survive that because I wouldn't do the seance. I think, though, if I was Charlie, like if either of us were Charlie in this scenario, I don't think we would live. Because I think the whole kind of point of the movie is that her death was unavoidable everything that happened was unavoidable like it was the demon like controlling everything from the start right yeah so yeah i guess it just depends if i'm a townsfolk i'm vibing i'm just like hey why is everybody naked in that treehouse that's weird on my way (laughs) and i'm like hey why is everybody naked in that treehouse let's go (laughs) Katie's in nothing about this cult strikes her as odd she's down the uh the decapitated body the burned body don't bother her she's she's kneeling before what can I say we do what we can to survive (sighs) yeah yeah 
Wow. What a compelling line to, uh, <laughs> to wrap this up. <laughs> <laughs> um, a new segment? Yes. Katie, I think you should try to guess the plot of the movie that we're going to watch for next week's episode. Now, I want to be clear. In this segment, you are not allowed to ever look up the plots of these movies. No. Never. And if you've already seen them, we'll skip it. But next week, we're going to be talking about... I know I'm not supposed to, like, influence, but my personal favorite slasher movie of all time. (laughs) Scream. Katie, yeah, and I already knew that. What do you think Scream is about? <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna give you the whole plot. Okay, I'm excited. Okay, so Drew Barrymore. Mm-hmm. Am I right so far? <laughs> and yes, Drew Barrymore Courtney is Cox. in it. Okay, and Courtney Cox, mm-hmm. and their friends are in a house. And they start getting strange phone calls. And um, turns out the phone calls are from a killer named Scream. <laughs> <laughs> right? Do they call him Scream? No, you know the name of him. Ghostface. Ghostface. Ghost they call him Scream. Is that what they call him? It's or is that what you call him? Okay, okay, so his, his name, name is No, okay. no, no, we're sticking to the original. His name is Scream. Go, continue. What does Scream do? And um, Scream plays games with them over the phone and slowly picks them off one by one until at the very end, he takes off his mask and you find out that it's one of them. One of, so you only mentioned Courtney Cox People and Drew Barrymore. Mask. So it's and their friends. Oh, and their oh, all of their friends. Got it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it got it. in the house. Okay. So it's one of it all takes place in a house. Okay. So it's in a house. There's a lot of people in the house. One of them yes. is the killer. That's your guess. Yes, and I don't think that the killer is either Drew Barrymore or Courtney Cox. In fact, okay. I think Drew Barrymore dies very early on, oh. and I know Courtney Cox is still alive because um, she's in the trailer for Scream. Yeah, that's kind of a spoiler. Yeah. I think Giveaway. she's going to be the killer in six. Oh. Because isn't that one of the things? Is that the killer is somebody different every time? I think I knew that. Yes. That's why I like it. <laughs> Shake it up. Okay. So any guesses on like, well, I guess you don't know the other characters, so you wouldn't be able to guess no. who is Ghostface if it's not the two that you know of. So... <laughs> When did this movie come out? The, 90s. the late 90s? 96, I think. Okay, mid to late 90s. Okay. So there's probably a guy named Brad or <laughs> Chad. And Is Brad or Chad the killer? Um, <laughs> or no? Well, no, I think that's too obvious. Okay, too obvious that it would... Well, it is the 90s, though. Was it obvious back then? That's the real, the real question. Excellent. It would be yeah, no, so obvious no. now that Brad or Chad is the killer. <laughs> is there a Brad or a Chad? No. Oh. Damn. <laughs> but I'm loving where this is going. I, I thought I had something. I'm definitely keeping my eye out for Brad and Chad. Uh, <laughs> it's gotta be. It's gotta be like Courtney's um, love interest or something, because I feel like that would be like the heaviest hit. Mm. You know, at the end of the movie, like. I loved you. All right. You know what? I love that. All right. You heard it here first. We're going to be watching Scream (laughs) next week. A guy named Scream kills a bunch of people (laughs) in a house. And Courtney Cox's boyfriend is Scream. So that's the plot. And Drew Barrymore dies. (laughs) All right. And there's a phone. There's a phone. There is a phone. Featured somewhere in the film. Yeah. Great. I think, you know what? Kind of nailed it. Nailed <laughs> so... it. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Can't That's wait. That's what this segment's going to be called. Yeah, but... just nailed it. Uh, no copyright infringement intended. Netflix, please don't sue us. <laughs>
All right. Well, that wraps it up for today. If there are any movies you'd like to hear us talk about, please let us know in the comments or shoot us a DM on our socials. Thanks for listening. And we'll see you next week when we talk about Wes Craven's 1996 slasher film, Scream. We'll see you then.